Field Trip by Jean Hunter. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pam Castile. Field Trip by Jean Hunter. Kyle was disgusted with the slow, cumbersome train. He disliked using this uncomfortable means of travel, but since he wanted to learn more about these strange creatures who were his ancestors, he had decided to try to become used to their ways. He was lonely in this strange, backward age, and when he unexpectedly saw another being like himself in the same coach, he hastened to make his presence known. He introduced himself and asked politely, "'When are you from?' Eight thousand. the other replied. "'Name's Broick, from Seven Galaxy.' "'I'm from out nineteen way myself,' Kyle said. "'Just a country boy, but eight thousand. "'That's only a period ahead of my own time. "'Maybe you could tell me—' "'Ah, uh ah!' -uh, the other admonished. "'Remember the first law of Thek. Oh, center, Kyle grumbled. I know. One may not divulge any scientific, technical, or social information to anyone from his own past whom he may meet at an equidistance point in a thick travel. I forgot. Bad, Broick said. Then he added, almost jokingly, You wouldn't want to be marooned in this dismal era, would you? Kyle shuddered. Of course not. "'But the laws seem so ridiculous.' "'Not a bit,' Broick said, warming up to the subject. "'It's very simple, really. "'Same principle that doesn't allow anyone to thick travel into the future. "'Look, I'm from 8,000. "'Say I went into 12,000, "'where I memorized as much information as I could on some subject, such as medicine.' So I returned to 8,000, retaining all such knowledge in my mind that's been learned in four periods. Therefore, I'd have knowledge that wasn't dreamed of in my own time, but was discovered sometime during the next four periods. But then it couldn't be discovered because I'd brought it back to 8,000 and, well, I'm no logician, but you see my point. Oh, it's reasonable, I suppose, Kyle admitted. I realize the laws are really for our own good. By the way, I'm here on a field trip to gather material for my thesis on advanced therapeutical psychology and its development since the 20th century. What phase of this era are you here to study? Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that, Broick said. It's of rather a secret nature, and... You mean we might violate a law and be stuck here for good, is that it? Yes, in a way. Frightened, Kyle let the matter drop. His gaze wandered through the coach, examining the other passengers with interest. As time travelers from a different space-time plane from their twentieth-century ancestors, he and Broick were naturally invisible to their fellow travelers. Two pompous old gentlemen were lighting cigars, and Kyle was about to remark on the habit of smoking when he noticed an even more remarkable phenomenon. A few seats ahead of them sat a good-looking young couple, oblivious to others about them. Look, Kyle cried excitedly, lovers, honeymooners, I've read about such things. Isn't it disgusting? Oh, I don't know, Broick said a little wistfully. I sometimes think it was a mistake for Sinner to do away with sex. It must have been interesting. Atavist! Kyle snapped in horror. Had his people's emotional makeup provided for blushing, Kyle would undoubtedly have turned beet red. Broick's words had caused him acute embarrassment. As he sat reflecting upon his strange companion, he suddenly began to feel a sensation he had often heard about, but never before had experienced. Terror and dismay filled him as he sought to throw off the probing finger that was penetrating his mind. He looked at Broick. There was the faintest notion of a smile on the other's face as he said, 
Yes, Kyle, I am a telepath. Kyle's mind reeled. He felt himself on the brink of some gigantic abyss, and then, as suddenly as it had come, the searching sensation faded away. Since you are unable to enter my mind, Broick said calmly, it's only fair that I tell you about myself. You are right, I'm an atavist. Even in period 8,000, such things can happen. Always such creatures are destroyed after their first psychotest, but my case was different. The controller who bred me was only a dabbler in such things. I was a failure, but he took a fancy to me. I was allowed to mature secretly. Few people knew of my existence. When I reached my majority, my presence became dangerous, and I was sent back into time to try and find the proper place for myself. And I think I found it here. Kyle was a very amazed young man. But such a barbarous age, he complained. Sex and atom bombs and everything. Remember, Broick smiled, these people are the forebears of the geniuses who created Center and the Galactic Empire. They'll survive despite their barbarism. The existence of Center is proof. It's rather horrible to contemplate, Kyle said thoughtfully, calmer now. And yet, this might really be a great age. In a way, I almost envy you. Of course you do, Broick said. You have certain tendencies. They bother you, although you manage to hide them well. I discovered them when I took the liberty of telepathing you. Artificial genetics isn't perfect, even in our time. Perhaps because we originally sprang from man. Perhaps we'll never be quite perfect because of that, even after thousands of periods of breeding. Kyle took another look at the loving young couple. It, it might be fun, after all. Broick laughed. You needn't envy me at all, you know. Kyle frowned. I'm telling you about myself, Broick went on. I have also told you of a specific condition existing a period ahead of your own time. Remember the first law? Center! We're marooned in the twentieth century. You have to accept it. But what will we do? Kyle's mind was reeling again. Since we've already broken the first law, Broick said, we may just as well break the second. No thick traveler may enter the body of a native of a foreign space-time. The young lovers kissed again, and this time there seemed to be an added zest, even to their passionate embrace. The End Field Trip by Jean Hunter Recording by Pam Castile